Hi, this is Representative Kurt Mosser, and this is my legislative report. Today we're at our Senior Expo, held here at Elysburg All Home Days. What a great event it's been. Uh, we had over 500 seniors come through today, 50 vendors, a number of uh, different seminars on different topics from scams and fraud to banking issues and, and legal issues for our seniors. I think our seniors get so much out of this. Uh, we're, we're so happy to be able to do this, and we look forward to it every year, as do our seniors. Uh, we're going to be doing a number of interviews today with some of the vendors that we have here today. And we're also going to show you a clip of one of our seminars. Uh, if you weren't able to make it here today, then you missed a great day. And we we'll look forward to seeing you maybe, maybe next year. If you have any questions about it, certainly call our office. We're with Kristen and Carly, right? Yes. And we're from Bloomsburg University. Um, and your major is? Audiology. Great. And you have a booth set up here today, and you're with um, the center. What's the center's name? The Center for Hearing and Balance. Okay. And what type of things do you do, especially when it relates to seniors and, and, and what we're putting on today with our Senior Expo, the things that are important to the seniors? Um, it's a freestanding clinic, so anybody is welcome to come in. Um, so what we're trying to represent today is... Uh, a lot of hearing protection, um, you know, this area is very uh, inclined with uh, noise-induced uh, situations in terms of gun uh, shooting um, and different things like that. Um, and with age, uh, tends to come with hearing loss, so uh, just educate them on those two different things. Uh, make sure that they really protect their hearing. And also, also with balance as well, because the balance mechanism is also in the ear, which a lot of people don't realize. So some people may have hearing issues and also a balance issues. And as the system degrades as people get older, it not only affects the hearing, but it can also affect their ability to walk. They may feel a little off balance or dizzy or have other kinds of disorders that we can also test for. And is the center located right on campus? Yes. Is it a... Is there a certain building that that would be in? Yeah, Centennial Hall is the building. We're on the third floor. And uh, we have both our balance clinic and our hearing clinic. Uh, and we do both testing in there. And what are some of the questions that you're getting from our seniors today? It's been a lot of uh, hearing aid questions. Like people as they're getting older, will hearing aids help them in certain situations like oh, I'm having trouble hearing the TV, or if I'm at church, I'm having trouble hearing the pastor. There are things to do to help that. And I've also had a few people who have been having trouble with walking, or they feel like they're falling more, or something like that. Can we do anything to help with that? And the answer? The answer is yes. <laughs> we can test to see if there is anything, like as far as the balance, we can test to see if there's anything going on, any kinds of uh, disorders within the system. And with a lot of them, we can treat right on campus. Anything else we can refer out to a doctor that can help them with that. Is there um, a way that they can get in contact with the, with the sender? Uh, yes, we actually have a pamphlet up at the front. Um, it gives all the information in terms of phone number, uh, address, uh, and location. So we have all that up front, and we hand that out as uh, patients walk by. Great, and we will put that up on our, we our, our website and uh, on this video, too. So folks, if you want to get a hold, a hold of someone over at Bloomsburg University, uh, we'll have that contact information up there. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We're with Wendy, and Wendy's with Life Geisinger. Um, tell us a little bit about a little bit about Life Geisinger. All right, Life Geisinger is the program of all-inclusive care for the elderly. Um, we help uh, seniors remain at home, age in place, try to avoid nursing home placement. So our goal is to do wraparound services in their home, as well as at our center that's located in Coltmont. So we provide physician cover care, um, nursing care home care, we have a therapy department, we help with medication compliance, um, bathing and dressing, some grocery shopping, housekeeping, that sort of things. So really trying to look at all the needs that a senior may have and um, assist them to remain as independent as possible in their own homes. That's great. Uh, and I've been at the, the center in Colmon. It is absolutely a gr gorgeous center. And I know the folks who go there really enjoy it. Um, so they can get care in their homes or at the center or a combination of both? 
combination of both. There's no attendance requirement. However, what we find is that the more the seniors visit us at our site in Coltmont, the more they get to know us, the more we get to know them. It's a better working relationship, and then we can manage their needs a lot more effectively. So the great thing about the LIFE program is we have our own transportation. So folks may have seen the LIFE van going through the neighborhood. Uh, we pick folks up at their home, door-to-door -door service, um, bring them to the site where they can enjoy some socialization, have a hot meal, get a bath or a shower if they need it, see the therapy department if they need it, and then of course the physician and the nursing staff are on site to care for any medical issues they may have. What are the age requirements for someone to be eligible to be, to be in the program? Everyone must be 55 or older, and we do serve 55-year-olds up to, we have a, a lady with us now who's 102, so we've got the full gamut of age range as well as physical abilities and cognitive abilities. Is it Monday through Friday then at the center? We are open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, not everyone comes on a, a daily basis, so they can really kind of pick and choose what days work best for them, um, how much support they actually need. Um, if they don't come to us, then we can certainly go to them in their own homes as well. What kind of questions are you getting here at the Expo from our seniors? Uh, folks believe that um, because we're Geisinger affiliated, they must have Geisinger insurance, and that's not true. We have, you can have any kind of insurance in order to roll, enroll with us. Um, one of the misconceptions that Life Geisinger is its own insurance program because we're funded from the federal government and the state government. So we're sort of our own entity. The Life program itself is a national model of care. It just so happens that Geisinger sponsors it in this area. Great. And if people wanted more information, can they just stop into the Coltmont Center? They certainly can. We're there uh, to give them a tour and answer any questions they have at any time. They can also give us a call and schedule an appointment if they want um, to sit down with one of us on the enrollment team. There is a website address as well, lifegeisinger.org, so they can find us in lots of different um, venues. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for what you do for our seniors. Sure. Thank you for having us. We're with Cheryl. Cheryl, tell us who you're with. I'm with the Pennsylvania Caption Telephone Relay Services. Great. And what type of services do you provide for our seniors? What we have is we have a telephone, two different types of phones that are for the hearing impaired that do closed captioning so that you can listen and read at the same time. Wow, that's a great service. So anybody who has any type of hearing, whether they're deaf or just to have a hard of hearing, this is going to help them. Yes, it does. It gives them a freedom and a security that they wouldn't have otherwise. Do you have to be a certain age to qualify for the, for the phone system? Oh, no, you don't. In fact, I was just at Camp Hero, Bloomsburg's camp for young kids under the age of 16 that have hearing issues. And a lot of them have our phones. That's fantastic. What are some of the questions that our seniors are asking you here today? One of the things they ask is, it's not really free, is it? Nobody believes that they can actually get something for free. That's great. That's great. And uh, it, obviously, the answer is yes, it is free. Uh, tell us how they would uh, contact you and, and how they get a hold of you. All they have to do is call my office at 717-255-0240. I travel the whole state so I could come see them or refer them to how they would get the phone. Um, particularly vets. We have a special program that has been set up for veterans called Heroes with Hearing Loss, where my parent company, Hamilton, is the one that pays for the phone for them. So it's definitely free. Wow, that's great to hear for our veterans. Can you tell us, show us the phones? Tell us a little bit about what the two different phones are. Yes, this is an 840 and it's for those who do not have internet in their homes. So this is the phone that they would get. If they have internet service, they can get one like this that hooks up to the internet, or my favorite, which is the 240i. This is a touch screen, so as you can see, you can make things bigger, you can make them smaller. You can adjust the colors so that it's personal preference as to what they prefer. That way it can be set up according to what they want. It gives them the control. That's great. Fantastic. Well, we thank you so much for being here today. And uh, we'll put your contact information uh, on our website. Thank you. And thank you for uh, inviting me to be here. It's thank been a good crowd. Great. Thank you. It could be somebody that's calling you from your banking institution, your credit card institution, and it might be blocked. The 
these individuals might tell you there's something significantly wrong with your account. Do me a favor, take in the information, take a deep breath, and hang up the phone, all right? What I want you to do is call your credit card company back, call your, your banking institution from a number you are familiar with, and then talk to them about the phone call that you received, and just give them the details. Please do not give the person on the phone that calls you, you did not make the phone call, any personal private information. Because they're going to call you and they're going to get to your emotions. They're going to tell you that somebody charged a huge amount on your credit card or somebody withdrew money from your checking account. And it gets to our emotions. We're like, oh, how am I going to pay my bills? What am I going to do? When I called Capital One from a number I was familiar with, was there anything wrong with my account? No. No, exactly right. So I can't stress this enough to every single one of you in here. These phone calls get to our emotions. If you receive a phone call from your credit card company or your banking institution, and yes, it might show up on your caller ID that it is a bank that you are used to or your credit card company, please take in their information and then hang up the phone. Call your credit card company, call your banking institution from a number you are familiar with. Okay? Questions on that? All right, what number are we at? Nine. nine. We are at number nine. We are going to talk about the sweetheart swindle. You never met this person before, but now they are asking you for financial help. I can't stress this enough to you guys. And I know we laugh about it, but this has been happening way too much in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And we are seeing, and more and more, I am meeting individuals 60 and up that have unfortunately given money to somebody where they believe that it was going to be the love of their life. All right, you guys are very smart and intelligent people in here. If it sounds too good to be true, it is, okay? Unfortunately, recently in Delaware County, we had a woman that decided that she was gonna date an older gentleman. She ended up taking over $44,000 from him. I share this with you because there are people here, maybe your neighbors or your family members that are not here today. If there becomes a time where somebody in your family or somebody that you might know all of a sudden has a younger girlfriend or a younger boyfriend, most of you in here know what they're after usually. So I share that with you that we have to be aware that yes, people can find love, but we have to really see what the determination is there. Are they just after somebody financially or do they actually have their best interest in mind? Okay? Questions on the sweetheart swindle? Okay, what number are we at? Eight. Yeah, you guys are good today. <laughs> Let's talk about investment scams, okay? These investment scams usually might happen with somebody you might possibly know. We see in sometimes in situations, it might be somebody that befriends you in a group or in an organization, and they tell you that they have another friend that financially can help you out and let you earn more money than the banks will ever let you earn. We have seen this as a pyramid scheme a lot of times, right? So you guys, I want you to use an institution if you want to do any financial work. Please use an institution you are familiar with, an institution that is also bonded. So if God forbid anything happens to your money, you will get it back. But we've had numerous situations and stories in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania where somebody trusted somebody. And it might be somebody that just met on social media. Hey, I remember I went to high school with you 30 years ago, and now you're an investor. That's great, I trust you. Or it might be somebody that you go to church with, and unfortunately they befriend you and say, hey, I have this great deal. You have to give me $2,500, and I promise a great return on your money. But you have to get more more people to get involved with us. So please be very careful with this. I want you guys to go to an institution that has a brick and mortar building, somebody that you can actually have a direct conversation with, and it's in writing about what you will, what your return is. What will you get out of your investment? Okay? Questions on financial scams. All right, what number are we at? Seven. seven. Let's talk about number seven. This is the front door fraud. 
Okay, you guys might be out walking the dog, or you guys might be planting some new plants. The mums are coming right now, right? You guys might be outside doing something, or just getting your mail. And all of a sudden, somebody walks up to you, and they say, hey, I have extra materials on my vehicle. I think you need your driveway seal coated. <laughs> and they're gonna offer you a great rate as long as you give them cash right now. Please don't do this. Unfortunately, this has happened a lot in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania where we had numerous people that had individuals come to their front door and say that they had extra materials on their vehicle to do some type of work. The seal coating, when the work was done, it looked beautiful until it rained. All of it went away, washed away. And then we, they call and complain about it and we go, okay, What's the name of the business? What kind of vehicle did they have? What did the people look like? How did you pay them? And they all go, cash? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, okay? I share that with you because please, if somebody comes to your front door and tells you, you need a new roof, you need new siding, they're gonna offer you a great rate on windows, Please tell them to walk away that you're not interested. Every single one of you in here, we can go around the room and talk about staples within your community, people that you are familiar with. If you don't know a good roofer or a good person that puts siding on or whatever work that you need to be done to even to landscaping or simple painting, we have a home improvements list within the Attorney General's office. Every contractor that makes over $5,000 a year has to be registered with our office. You guys might see business cards or advertisements that say PA number, da, 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 da. You guys, if you don't have a contractor that you don't know who to use, please contact our office. I have booklets for you before you leave here today. You guys can each take a booklet or couples, whatever you guys wanna do, take a booklet with you. If at any time you have any questions or concerns about a contractor, please call our office. If you are internet savvy, you can go on attorneygeneral.gov. You can click on contractors and you can get a list of all the registered contractors in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You can actually just type in your city and city where you live and then a whole list of contractors will come up. We recommend that you use an approved contractor in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Also, do me a favor, if you're gonna get any type of work done at your home, please do not use a handshake. What I mean by that is get yourself a full contract. On that contract should be the contractor's name, phone number, get yourself a start date and an end date, and the total cost of the project. You only have to pay one third up front of the total cost of the project in order to get a start date, unless you have a special order. If they are ordering you something specifically for your home, then you have to prepay for that because they have to order that for you and they can't use it at any other home. Then, when they start the project, go ahead and give them the other third that is due to them. Then, when the project is completed to your satisfaction, pay them in full. If it's not completed to your satisfaction, please do not give them the other third until the project is successfully completed. Because if you're not satisfied with it and you paid them in full, do they have any incentive to come back and finish it correctly? No. no. So that's a law in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. A third, a third, a third. If that happens to you guys, especially with these contractors that are just fly by night, please call the police because if they're visiting you, guess who else they're visiting? Your neighbors, okay? And I don't want them to get caught in this scam. You guys are very smart and intelligent people in here and we're having this conversation. So if somebody is going around in your area that's odd, you guys are very smart, that's odd. Why is this guy here? Call your police department, and I know some of you might live in PSP territory, and yes, it might take them a long time, but if you can, get the information about the vehicle, license plate, what kind of vehicle was it, color, and then at least they can track them down in that half hour or 45 minutes it might take them to come to your area, okay? All right, look out for each other. We have to protect each other in here. Look out for each other, okay? What number are we at? Six. Six. You guys are good. You had coffee this morning. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the medical alert system or your bracelet. You guys might get a phone call that somebody says, congratulations, you have a free medical alert bracelet coming to you. All you have to do is pay shipping on that 
bracelet. Okay, do me a favor, and then they're gonna also tell you that there's a, a monthly fee to have that bracelet. If you didn't order one, you don't want it, right? And I share that with you because you, the, it might be two different situations happening here. Somebody that is a third party might be trying to sell it to you and sell the system to you. Or it might be just a criminal that wants your credit card information. So please, if a doctor didn't order it for you, you didn't order it, your family didn't order it, please don't give this personal information to somebody over the phone because what they want from you is your credit card information. And we don't know if it is a third party that's trying to initiate contact with you or if it's just a criminal that's trying to get your credit card information. Okay? Questions? Okay. What number? Five. five. Lucky number five. Charities. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's talk about charities for a minute. We talked about caller ID. I can't stress this enough to every single one of you in here. If you get a phone call from a charity and you are interested in possibly donating to them, please have them send you something in the mail. It doesn't matter if it shows up wounded warriors or veterans or American Red Cross on your caller ID. That doesn't mean that's them calling you. At that point, if you ask them to send you something in the mail, they're probably going to tell you, we're a nonprofit organization. We can't afford to send you anything in the mail. You guys can't afford to give a total stranger your credit card information over the phone. Okay? Also, let's talk about charities that you might send things to them in the mail. You guys have to realize that charities could possibly sell your addresses or give them away for free, saying that they got a donation from you. And a lot of times, you guys might give a donation to one charity, then what, three to four weeks later, everybody knows your name, right? And it might be charities that are similar names to the charities that you already gave to. Plus, these charities might give you something for free, right? I bet you some of you in here have enough address labels for the next 20 years, okay? <laughs> Address labels, tablets, pens, right? You guys have to realize that these charities are using marketing departments to send you this information. You guys have to realize that the marketing department has to get paid. Guess how they get paid? Out of the donation that you are giving. We are seeing some charitable organizations are paying up to 80% of your donation so you can get those free items. So my suggestion to you, Give locally, and even if you're gonna give locally to a larger organization like the American Red Cross, ask them before you give the donation, how much money is staying in my county? You guys sometimes are better off giving $5 to an organization that might, your four-legged friends that might need some water or food, or to a veterans association, your fire department, and please, the FOP, fraternal order please, the state police is not going to call you to ask you for a donation. If you get a call from the state police, your mind goes, oh, Pennsylvania. That is not an organization within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It is outside of the Commonwealth. Okay? So please, you guys are better off giving locally, and I really, really suggest that. Unfortunately, the tragedy of 9-11, we had peak criminals calling us up saying, and with any disaster that happens, that's why I'm saying with phone calls, please don't give a charitable donation over the phone. Ask them to send you something in the mail. Okay? And even with breast cancer awareness or the American Red Cross or a veterans association, if they're calling you, even if it shows up on your caller ID, please do not give them your credit card information over the phone. Mm -hmm. How many calls are received from Microsoft? Oh, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, I'll talk about it now since you brought it up. An uh, extra scam. Um, please, if you guys have internet access at home or computers, please, if you get a phone call from Microsoft or Dell that's telling you that you have a virus, they never know if you have a virus. You're the only one that knows that. Okay. <laughs> Please, they're going to tell you they'll fix your virus for $100, $250. Then they'll monitor you for the next several months for an additional $54.95 a month. The problem with all of this is in order for them to get into your computer to help you with your virus, they need your IP address. 
They're gonna tell you to go to the start button and they're gonna instruct you what to do. When you do that, they're on the computer when you're on the computer, okay? It's a scam, all right? How you get away from these calls, tell them you don't have a computer, okay? <laughs> if it, you might have one, it's a little white lie, okay? When you go upstairs, I think everything will be okay with the boss if you say it's a white lie, okay? Yes, I had to lie about having a computer because I got scammed, okay? Government and banking impersonators, okay? This specifically has to do with the IRS, okay? The IRS will never call you if you owe back taxes. They will send you a certified letter in the mail, okay? These calls, these people get very belligerent, okay? If you work for a government agency, do those people usually get belligerent? No, right? If I got like that, I would be finding a new job, all right? I share that with you because I want you guys to think. You guys are very smart and intelligent people in here, but this phone call gets to our emotions because of the threatening. I'm gonna come and arrest you. I have your address. They can get your address. If you guys own property or real estate, it's on the internet, okay? Be aware of that. If you guys are internet savvy in here, Put your name online and take a look at how much information is actually out there about you already. A lot of these calls and these scammers are getting information from us because it's already on the internet. And some of it we can't control because, you know, with especially with real estate and property, it's already out there. So please, if somebody calls you from the IRS, just hang up. Don't give money to them. We've seen significant amount of money being sent to the IRS. And they're gonna do it in a couple different ways. Same with the charities or same with the next thing we're gonna talk about. They're gonna ask you to wire money to an account. They're gonna tell you the account is in Washington, D.C. It's not, it's overseas in a Western Union. Um, please do not wire money to anybody. And they're also gonna give you specific instructions not to share your information with anybody else. Because if you go to the bank and tell them I gotta send money to the IRS, they're gonna tell you not to do that, okay? Or they're gonna ask you to buy a prepaid gift card. Some of you in here might have bought prepaid gift cards for birthdays, weddings, or um, anniversaries. With these prepaid gift cards, they're gonna tell you get $200, get $2,000 on a gift card. Then several hours later, they'll call you back and they'll say, Oh, good morning, good afternoon. I just want to confirm, I believe you, that you went and got the gift card, but I want to confirm that you got the card. Could we have the account number on the back of the card? What happens when you give them the account number? The money is gone, okay? We've had several individuals in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that come up to us or call us and say, I still have the gift card in my hand. My next question to them is, did you give them the account number? If you give them the account number, poof, the money is gone, okay? This is when a healthcare scam, okay? Please, if you get a postcard in the mail or if you get a phone call from somebody that says, we wanna go over Medicaid or Medicare or your current insurance, please ask them if they're affiliated with a government agency. A lot of times these organizations are trying to get you to change your insurance carrier to them and they are an outside agency. That's all the time we have for today. I want to thank all my staff and the volunteers who helped put this amazing program on today and thank you for listening. If you have any questions about the expo or anything state related, please call my office. Uh, the information will be on the screen shortly.